Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I did this drawing of a cockapoo in pastels. So for this tutorial I'm going to be focusing on some tips and techniques for drawing the multiple fur textures that this cockapoo has. But if you would like to see a step-by-step -step tutorial of a main section of her fur, this is the softer fur on the top of the head and around the eyes, then I do have that available here on YouTube and I'll link that in the description below. As I said, that's step-by-step -step and I'm showing you each individual layer there in a bit more of a slower footage. So that is linked in the description. But my main aim here, as you can see, is I'm building up a good base layer. Now I personally do put a lot of focus on my base layer stage because it's our foundation for our details. Although we're going to be adjusting it with multiple layers that we add, it's still important to really map in our main lights and darks and I'm also following that fur direction early on. For me personally, I feel that that then provides us with better information and how we can move that pencil with our detailed layers. So take this base layer of the ear for example, I've just mapped in the main direction of the clumps of fur. I can then start to follow those main clumps of fur early on. It's going to therefore be far easier to make more of that realistic depth within that fur by following the main fur direction. Now I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur. Now fur direction is one of those key tips and I will link that video in the description below if that's also of interest. But because I've mapped in the fur direction at that first layer, it's now so much easier for me to add these detailed layers on top. And because Rosie here, the cockapoo, does have so many variation of the fur textures, I have made her portrait available on Patreon as a complete real-time full-length tutorial. There are no bits sped up, there's no sections cut out, it's all there step by step. You get the reference photo, line art and full material list so you can see every single colour from the pan pastel base layer to those pastel pencils for all of my details in that Patreon version. So if that's of interest or any of my other slower tutorials in pastels or acrylics then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. Now something I speak thoroughly about in all tutorials on Patreon and YouTube is my contrast. Now this for me is really important and is something I focus on early on more so than the exact colour. I want to make sure that I've got my highlights bright and my shadows dark. For me that's what's going to make the portrait more realistic. Because the one thing to bear in mind with colour of a photograph is you could take 5-10 to 10 photos of that animal and that colour of the fur is going to be different in every single one. Because it's going to be affected by the environment, whether or not you've used a flash, whether or not it was taken indoors or outside. There are so many different situations. Now in a moment when I work on the ear you're going to see that I'm using a little white sponge to apply my pan pastel base layer. Now I usually use eye makeup applicators and I love those, I think they're a really good cheaper solution but the soft tools that we can also use are they're far more pricier and you can burn through them when you're working on pastel matte paper. And all I mean by burning through them is literally that you just damage the sponge so that you can't use that applicator for your base layer. You'll start to see holes and chunks of that sponge coming away from that applicator. Now there is a way of avoiding that, you can make them last for a little longer and it's all down to the amount of pressure that you're applying to that soft tool. So if you're burning through them really quickly and you're using them and they're damaging the sponge really quickly, it's probably because you're putting too much pressure on that applicator. However, if I can try and find another solution for my Patreon members who are struggling with a specific art supply, then I will do my very best to try and find that solution. The foam wedges worked really well and I was actually really impressed. Not on this portrait, I struggled to use them to get the accuracy right, but I've used them on a second portrait after this cockapoo and I have to say they are definitely growing on me. It's just about practicing with working with a larger sponge that isn't um, supported by a handle. Once you've overcome that, they're a lot easier to use. So I'm now going to carry on building the fur on the muzzle. Now for this, my preferred way is to work from dark to light and build up your layers working from what's closest to the skin and then building up from there. That's going to be the best way of achieving more realism and the most depth that you can out of that one section of fur. 
if you find that the fur that you're drawing looks a little flatter, you don't necessarily have the same three-dimensional feel, that softness that you're after for this cockapoo texture, then it will probably be because you don't have enough layers built up. When you add your layers in the way that I am here, and I'm working with, you know, sometimes up to 10 layers, you want to be making sure that you're building them up gradually. Look at the base layer on the right hand side. I haven't added any details yet, but the left hand side is looking nice and depth. The fur looks thick as it should do for this type of fur texture. That's because I'm building up numerous layers slowly. I don't want to be jumping to my brightest highlights first straight after that base layer because I'm going to end up with a very flat two dimensional look. Now, another thing that I talk about in all tutorials is focus on the correct order. So if you have any section of fur that's overlapping another part of the body, make sure to draw what is overlapping last. So in case of the chin here, I want to make sure that I had the chin in first and then I added the final details of the top part of the muzzle later. Doing it in that order is going to make it look like the fur from the top lip is overlapping onto the lower lip, which is exactly what you want here. Although I did the muzzle, the top section of the face and the mouth first all around the nose, I made sure to finish those final details at the end of my pencil strokes once the chin was drawn in. And this is also the case when you're drawing collars. So I decided to leave the collar until the last element, mainly because it was a bright red colour and I didn't want to have any of that mix in with the fur when I was drawing right up to the edge of the collar. So I wanted to make sure that I could avoid that situation completely. So here, this is where I'm starting to build up that curlier fur texture. I'm going to have to again finish off these curls that overlap the collar once the collar is in place, but I need to do that in that right order as I've just mentioned. But for the layering process for the curly fur, I'm breaking this down into individual layers as I do with any fur texture. My biggest tip here when you're working with curly fur is have a nice, smooth, soft looking base layer. Also work in small sections. You can see here that although I'm working from left to right, I am only focusing on two or three square inches at one time. Here, I'm just focusing on my lights and my darks and the basic shapes. Once I've got those built in and blocked in, I can then build up my layers from there. So this is definitely one of the more complex fur textures that Rosie has, and most cockapoos are going to have some degree of curly fur, especially on the body. This is one of the main reasons why I wanted to keep the Patreon version all in real time. There is no section at all sped up because this is naturally a difficult fur texture because there is an awful lot going on, it's one of those situations where we can think, where do I start? When I have that feeling, I always approach something in a specific way to prevent myself getting too overwhelmed by that situation. By working with small sections and then breaking it up into individual layers, it does definitely become far easier to tackle. So as I've said, if you would like to see this process all in real time, I will link my Patreon in the description below. Now I'm going to keep this tutorial here on YouTube, just purely focusing on the fur. I'm going to upload a separate tutorial showing how to draw a collar. I'm probably going to go with a leather collar and then have a separate tutorial for a fabric collar. So I have that coming up. But here is a finished photograph of Rosie's finished portrait. And as you can see, I've got my contrasts right. My highlights are bright, but my shadows are dark. That's the most important thing. And that's what's making this look more realistic rather than the colour. Now, I have focused on the colour aspect of this portrait because that is, of course, important. So in that Patreon tutorial, you have a palette camera in the corner where you can see every single colour mix I'm doing with my pan pastels. So how much of each colour I'm using, the technique that I'm using to mix those on a spare separate sheet of paper can all be seen throughout that tutorial. If you've got any questions, any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. and I'm more than happy to help if I can. If the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video were useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. And I upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you'd like to keep up to date with that content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. As always, thank you so much for watching.